In early 2024, Xgrids unveiled the K1, which has been one of the best handheld scanners for capturing Gaussian splatting. Well, that's officially changing today with the unveiling of their newest camera, the Portal Cam. Portal Cam is the first camera designed specifically from Xgrids to capture Gaussian splatting. That's right, this camera is legitimately designed to capture the world in lifelike 3D. So I've been using the Portal Cam for roughly a month now, and it has been so much fun to use. In this video, I will give an introduction to using the Portal Cam and we'll follow up in a secondary video with a larger deep dive into it. The K1 is a incredible camera, but there's been one major drawback to it, and that's been its price. Priced at nearly $12,000 US, it's only been affordable for people working in industries like construction or geospatial. Unless you, of course, you have someone who just really loves Gaussian spotting, but you know, I don't know who that could be. Anyways, the really amazing thing about the Portal Cam is that not only is it less expensive than the K1, but it's dramatically less expensive. It's actually less than half the price coming in at $5,000, and I actually even have an additional discount code for people to get $500 off, so $4,500 for the Portal Cam. By putting the price tag of the Portal Cam into the prosumer range, we're finally being able to consider buying a natively 3D camera instead of going with a traditional mirrorless one. This is a really exciting moment because now we have the ability as general prosumers to go and create captures in very lifelike 3D. Let's take a look at some of the features on how to use the portal cam. Taking a look at the portal cam, we can see that there are four cameras total. There's two front-facing cameras, one of which is shooting at 85 degrees and a second of which is shooting at 100 degrees. There's also dual fish eyes on both sides of the camera that are shooting each at 200 degrees. Finally, there's also a giant LiDAR unit on the top where you can just passively walk through it and it's shooting roughly 860,000 points per second. And the portal cam has a half inch CMOS rolling shutter sensor. So far, nobody's really come up to me and said anything as I've gone out to shoot. Uh, nobody's really even like given any thought about what I was doing. So to turn on the portal cam, you're gonna double click the power button on the back here like this. It's gonna cycle through it and then it's gonna take maybe about 30 seconds or so to turn on. And you'll know it's on once it makes a noise. Okay, great. So now the portal cam is turned on and ready to be used. So to turn off the device, we're going to double tap it again, like so. It's going to kind of subtract all of it out, and now all of a sudden, it's off. The portal cam is a bit lighter than the K1, coming in at just under two pounds without the tripod, but it's really easy just to walk around with it in your hand over long distances. The battery life does go a bit quickly, giving me about roughly 60 minutes of shooting, but you can still get a lot of capture done in 60 minutes. One really great thing about the battery, though, is what it actually uses. So when I actually remove the battery here, I just pop it out like this, and we can actually go ahead and see that the portal cam uses USB-C, meaning that I can charge it with any of my modern device chargers, and it's super easy to get on the go. That said, I would recommend potentially looking into buying two batteries just to be safe. Reinserting the battery is also super easy. You literally just line it up with the arrow, and you just slot it in the back, and then you just simply click it in. Let's take a look at what comes in the portal cam box. I'm gonna open up the box really quick and we can take a look at what's inside. There first is this USB-C to C cable, which we're gonna to use to charge and connect to the USB mode. There's also a brick as well. Here is a nice cleaning cloth that you can put onto the cameras and the LiDAR unit. And here is the portal cam itself. And it's got a nice little carrying case as well too for it. We can see a couple of different angles from the actual device itself. And yeah, let's get back to the video. If you've heard me say Gaussian spotting a bunch of times in this video and wondering what exactly is Gaussian spotting, Gaussian spotting is a way to reconstruct really lifelike 3D from just normal 2D images. It was published a little bit over two years ago and it's pretty crazy that not only do we have software developed specifically for Gaussian spotting, but now we have hardware as well that is specifically meant to capture the world in lifelike 3D. Now that we've done a quick little overview of the portal cam, let's go out into the real world with it. There's also a brand new mobile app coming for the portal cam and that's called LCC Scan for both iOS and Android. This has been one of my favorite parts of the portal cam compared to the K1 because of how easy it is to use. With the K1, it used to be a little bit difficult to pair the device to my phone every so often, but with the portal cam, every single time I've used it so far, it is paired within seconds to my device and I'm just ready to go out and shoot. This has been one of the biggest quality of life improvements with the portal cam and one of the reasons why I've been really loving using it out in the world. Within the LCC scan app, there's also different groups of presets for shooting. There's indoor, there's nature, and night mode. That said, one of the really amazing things about the portal cam is that you can now take captures of people. Yes, that's right. That means you can now use Xgrid's devices to create 3D portraits of humans. You might be thinking because the portal cam can shoot more detail than the K1 that the file sizes must be much larger. Well, that's actually not really the case that I found. 
I would say that on average, every 10 minutes of shooting with the portal cam, I'm getting about five gigabytes of data, which when you take a look at say, comparing to like another camera or a phone, it's actually pretty in line with just using one camera. So the portal cam I've actually found to be quite efficient. That said, it is really easy just to kind of go overboard with some of the captures here and just take it out and capture too much. So you also might want to just make sure that you have enough space on either an external hard drive or your computer to save it on. One nice thing about the portal cam though is that it actually has built-in storage so that you're not needing to like juggle like did I bring my memory card or something like this. It actually has a 512 gigabyte memory card on device itself which has been super nice to not have to worry about. I've often said that we're in the film photography era of Gaussian splatting and by that I mean we don't have an instant preview of our capture right after it's been taken. We have to go and actually develop it ourselves. One of the really nice things about the Xgrids ecosystem, whether it's with the Portal Cam or the K1, is that I always have a certain confidence level when I go out to shoot. Whereas if I'm using, say, like my phone or another camera of some kind, there's always this weird like question when I get home and I say like, did I actually capture things in a strong enough way? The Xperience ecosystem really like removes that question for me, which has been really, really nice to use. And now that the portal cam is able to take in even more details compared to the K1, it's really been able to let me like capture very fine details across large areas. The two front facing cameras are actually shooting a lot more high resolution images compared to the K1. And it's been really easy to capture. Once you've actually gone ahead and captured everything, we're gonna have to transfer it from the portal cam onto the computer. Compared to the K1, connecting to your computer with the USB mode is significantly easier. Basically, just like before, we're gonna double tap, but this time we're gonna tap the activity button twice, and we're actually gonna leave like a second in between to let it turn white first before we tap it again, and now once it turns blue, it's ready to be in USB mode. And we can see as well, there also is a USB-C adapter right here on the camera. So this is going to be where we plug the cable into and it's going to just pop up on a new window and you're just going to double click and drag and drop the files into a new folder on your computer. But as a note, you can't actually charge the portal cam while you're using it. And so to get out of USB mode, we're just going to double tap again. We're going to let it turn white and tap again. It's going to turn green and now it's going to be ready to be used again. Xgrid's reconstruction software is called LCC Studio. And as a note, you do need to have a NVIDIA GPU and be on Windows to run it. So I'm going to be using my Dell computer for this. Now that we're signed in, we're going to go ahead and hit create and type in the name of the capture here. And we're just going to link the actual parent folder right here. And I'm just going to update some of the settings to be on slow and use 24 gigs of VRAM. I'm also going to turn off portability. And uh, then I think we're ready to hit start and get going. We will have to hit start one more time, but I'm just going to jump ahead. So about 70 minutes later, we have the final reconstruction. We can see here there's really almost zero artifacts at all in this scene. And the capture portion of this took maybe five minutes of me just walking around with the portal cam but we can see the level of detail too if i just go ahead and actually zoom in a little bit to these trash cans here we can read completely fine and when i also pan around you can see some of the view dependent effects as well on the trash cans overall the portal cam has been so much fun to use and i've really enjoyed the last month or so with it this is really the first time that i think that we have had hardware specifically designed for Gaussian splatting to capture the world in 3D. And so it's really exciting now that general prosumers have the ability to potentially buy this camera. It's exciting to see the future of imaging progress in this way where we can now start to rapidly create lifelike 3D. And we even have hardware that is specifically designed for it. For people who have seen Xgrids over the last couple of years, is this the camera that would finally let you get into the Xgrids ecosystem? Let me know what you think of the portal cam in the comments and what you would use a 3D camera for. Subscribe for more content like this and let me know if there's any questions about the portal cam that you really want answered. If you're interested in trying out some of the PLY files from the portal cam, I have a link to my Patreon where the files are located. I'm gonna do a deeper dive on the portal cam, how to use it, how to process it, and how to go out and capture it in the world as well. So let me know if there's other features that you'd like me to run through with it. Thank you so much everyone for watching today. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing or checking out some of the other videos that I have about Gaussian spotting. There's some really incredible content that I'm working on right now, which I think will legitimately blow people's minds about where this technology is and where it is going to be headed. So if you're interested, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all of the above. It would be really helpful to me. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. What is my purpose? You create Gaussian splatting reconstructions. Oh my god. Yeah, welcome to the club.